Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Happy January, happy 2023. We're here already. Um, we are going to take a minute. This is kind of typical for this time of the year to kind of give a state of the chapter address, um, review, kind of who, who, where, and why, who we are, where we are, and why we do this. We'll reflect on some of our 2022 um, programming. And then um, I'll be turning it over to Christina to go through some of the exciting things for 2023 coming up. So uh, if you have not met me, I am Kirsten Sheely. I'm the current president for the IIDA Ohio Kentucky chapter. I am based out of Columbus. Um, like I said, you'll be hearing from Christina Reagan. She is our president elect and my savior to take this all over. <laughs> um, and then also our past president, um, Bethany Williams, rounds out the trio. Um, Bethany, also my savior, is still heavily involved in IAJ, um, still just as vested as she's ever been before. Um, Bethany is currently serving on the Equity Council at IAGA National. Um, and then she also received the Member of the Year Award in 2022. So congratulations, Bethany. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you've done for our chapter and what you continue to do at the national level. Um, you've made a huge impact and we appreciate you. Um, and then I will go through uh, um, introductions of our board. So um, the Ohio Kentucky chapter um, is made up of a board. You can see all of our VPs shown here. We have our VP of Advocacy, Tamara, out of Columbus. Our VP of Benefactors, Amanda Cook, out of Cincinnati, Dayton. Um, VP of Communications, Sammy, um, she's out of Columbus. VP of Membership, Chris, out of Lulex. VP of Outreach, Tori, she is um, out of Cleveland, and this is a new role for us that we will be touching on a little bit later today. VP of Professional Development, Kristen, out of Cleveland. VP of Public Relations, Courtney, out of Lulex. VP of Special Events, Megan, out of Cincinnati. Our VP of Student Relations, Tyler from Columbus, and our Director of Finance, Catherine. Um, so that is your Ohio Kentucky Board. Um, thank you guys for all of the efforts you put forward. We just um, gathered here this past weekend in Columbus for some quarterly planning. Uh, lovely to see all your faces and thank you for all your contributions. Um, at the local city center level, um, we have leaders um, for each of those committees. So um, of our five city centers, Cincinnati, Dayton, uh, Ryan Castle is spearing up that committee. Um, Ryan is also recruiting for a co-director. So <laughs> anybody in the Cincinnati, Dayton area who wants to team up and be a co-director with Ryan, um, unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately, I should say, our previous co-director accepted a position in Utah and has moved over there. So it's a good thing for her, but we would love some help in Cincinnati, Dayton. Um, Cleveland Akron, we have two co-directors, Nicole Barnes and Erin Hardgrove Ott. Um, Columbus, um, Isoke Miller-Harris and Alana Carlson. Oh, sorry, Elena Carlson. And then um, Lou Lex has um, Katie Pitts and Crystal. And then out of Toledo, Maria Ruggiero. So um, these co-directors are kind of like sandwiched in between leading their local committees and then communicating at the chapter board with our initiatives. So you guys often are doing double duty and I wanted you to know that we greatly appreciate all your help to make um, our chapter events and programming successful. And behind those spaces, thank you to all of you. Um, our committees at the local level are over 60 people strong. And I'm pretty sure it took all 60 of you to plan our chapter design awards this past fall. So thank you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, you're the reason that we're here and we're doing this, and um, we greatly appreciate all of your efforts at the local level as well. Um, I should take a minute too to note that um, the positions roll over um, in July, so we will have some open positions coming available um, July of 2023. Um, you'll, the next newsletter that you'll be seeing from chapter will outline what those positions are that are available and We'd love to see some new faces on our board if you are interested. So be on the lookout for that. All right, and then I'll just give kind of a quick overview of our chapter and where we stand today. 
So um, kind of as you saw, as we ran through our directors, we have um, our two different states, Ohio and Kentucky, comprised of five different city centers. Um, membership across those city centers, you can see here that we are totaling right now, just hovering under 700 total members, so close to hitting that number. Um, and you can see kind of how the membership breaks down across our five city centers here. Um, we do have a lofty goal of growing our chapter to a thousand members. It's, uh, you'll hear more about that in a minute, but we are excited. We are the biggest that we've ever been to date and we are definitely still growing. And then included in those members, members are our student membership. So across our two states here, we have 13 different campus centers. Um, 13, you guys, is a lot for our two mighty little states here. Uh, Texas has the most campus centers at 15, um, us coming in in second place at 13, and then um, nobody else even comes close. The next chapter only has six city centers, so I sh or campus centers, I'm sorry. Uh, I share that with you just to say that we have a really, really strong student base of population in our membership. Um, and we've got great opportunity to um, educate and enroll those students into our professional design industry. So um, good news there. And then here, just a minute to reflect on kind of the why we're here and why we do all of this. Um, our chapter had looked at our mission and vision statement um, last fall, um, just to kind of check in and make sure that it's um, topical and current and following all of our um, kind of best practices um, as we move forward as a chapter. So um, just some minor tweaking I wanted you to hear from us today that our mission statement is the IIDA Ohio Kentucky chapter provides meaningful resources to the commercial interior design industry to elevate and advocate for the profession. Our vision or what makes us excited about this is through a network of design leadership, our vision is to positively impact the health and well being of people's lives by fostering safe, inclusive, and sustainable communities. So, a lot of good things we do boil down into two sentences, um, but there it is. There's the why we are here today. So, um, moving along, I'm going to take the next portion here to just review what has been happening in 2022, some really impactful programming. Starting off with our Thrive Leadership Roundtable. So 2022 was the second year running for this event. Um, if you have not heard, we are pleased to say that IITA headquarters recognized this event as a, for a Change Maker Award. Um, it's kind of a prestigious award. They only give out three, or they only gave out three last year, I should say. So we're super excited to have been honored for this program. Um, if you're not familiar with Thrive, um, it, this is an opportunity for us to gather senior level design leaders. Um, we have open dialogue around the business of design and what challenges the business may be facing. Um, so this past year you see up in the left corner there, that is Alan Martin. She is the EDI champion for Shaw Contract. Um, she led a conversation around belonging as a design practice. Um, some of the topics discussed were um, approachable leadership when it comes to EDI opportunities and navigating the various so societal lenses found in the workplace. So Alan traveled around to each of our five city centers to host this in-person conversation kind of in a smaller intimate gathering. Um, attendees, I think, found it highly valuable to look to their peers for um, guidance and advice on these subjects. Um, and then I will um, kind of make a plug here. We are starting the planning for our 2023 event, which will be held in May of this year. So for any of you who may have attended this in the past or has an idea around um, a good topic, we are eager and happy to hear those ideas now as we start that planning process. And then also in 2022, we in, uh, rolled out our very in first Enrich grant. Um, and instead of you listening to me to explain it, I am gonna play this short little video. This is our VP of Professional Development, Kristen. 
who will tell you all about it. Um, Kristen was the one who um, implemented this program and got it set up for us. So here it goes. I, um, so I'm gonna yell at me, I guess, Christina, if the audio is no good. <laughs> Our IIDA Ohio Kentucky chapter is proud to offer our member enhancement fund called Enrich. This fund was created to support the advancement of our design community by supporting the professional development and education of our members. With the creative nature of our industry, it is essential for interior designers to embrace lifelong learning beyond the traditional CEU. Through Enrich, IIDA members have the opportunity to receive financial support through available grants to fulfill their personal ambitions. Activities must focus on education, knowledge, or research, so the possibilities are truly endless. Once a grant recipient completes their experience, they will give back to our chapter and share a glimpse of their new learnings. We are excited to see what new learnings and opportunities our members desire to enrich their minds. Yeah, she did a much better job than I could have. <laughs> Let me go back to our, sorry, as I'm navigating to get back to our presentation mode here. Our, our IADA, Ohio. Go figure. Okay, we're back. All right, so congratulations to Rebecca Matheny. She is a professor of interior design at the Ohio State University. Um, she is gonna be taking a course called, um, called Design Futures. It is at the Institute for the Future. Um, we're super excited that Rebecca will be taking all her learnings from that workshop and um, hosting a workshop for IIDA to share everything she's learned with us. So. Um, she's our very first recipient. Rebecca, we're thrilled for you. And we do plan um, to uh, open applications early this fall for the 2023 grant application process. And then also in 2022, we have some new outreach efforts happening. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, when I was introducing the board, Tori is our new VP of Outreach. That position um, was created this past year so that we could um, focus on giving back to our local communities and making an impact there. Um, in addition, raising awareness for the interior design profession, uh, potentially to underprivileged areas who might not know as much about it um, with the goal of diversifying the profession. So um, Tori um, planned and led um, our Friday forum this past fall, where she got a speaker, Brooke, to come in and kind of do a little myth busting about EDI and what some of those topics meant. Um, so that was wildly fun. Um, we have two more Friday forums coming up this year. Hopefully you guys can join us for those. Um, and then if you want to hear more about kind of our outreach initiatives, everything else we've been doing, uh, we are thrilled to announce that headquarters has spotlighted our chapter. Literally, if you just go to IIDA.org, the landing page, we are front and center right now um, with a whole article about Ohio, Kentucky and um, our outreach initiative. So uh, kudos to the team um, for getting recognized by headquarters. Some really exciting momentum here um, that we will continue on with. Um, I think Sammy is going to also be dropping some of these links in the chat as we move along. So hopefully we can make that easy for you guys and you're not scrambling to screenshot and write things down right now. Okay, and then um, just one last little thing that happened last year. Um, we successfully rolled out our very first chapter-wide interior design awards. So we've been hosting design awards at the local levels um, at city centers. And this past year, um, after many years in the making, we came together for a chapter-wide Ohio and Kentucky Design Awards. Super excited to show you guys today. We have a little um, recap video that just came hot off the press from our uh, videographer this past weekend. So bear with me again as I get the video queued up and played here. <laughs> 
we have a full recap on the website. We have loaded up um, all of the photos. Um, so you saw there at the end, Joe Benford was um, the one that provided the video. And then, gosh, it's like a thousand photos to go through, um, which are really successful and um, beautiful. So check all that out. We wanna say congratulations to all of our winners that you see here. Um, we had over, we had all five, all five city centers represented um, over 100 project submissions. It was a huge success. Um, thank you to all of the sponsors that made that successful. Um, we are excited um, to tell you that some of the profits raised from this event will be put forth towards our advocacy efforts coming down the road. So um, big shout out to everyone for participating and planning and making this happen. Um, I do um, want to kind of clarify, there's been some question about this event and the city center events. So um, basically our chapter design awards is every other year. And then in the in-between years are the local city center design award events. So um, you're going to hear more about those local events coming up this year. Um, okay, that's a lot happening at the Ohio Kentucky chapter level. Just a couple um, things worth noting that are going on at headquarters. So um, some of you might have heard of a program headquarters um, started in 2021 called Design Your World. Um, what's new coming out this year is that they are rolling that out um, to Miami. So um, Design Your World, if you're not familiar, um, it's an education pipeline program. Uh, it is uh, driven by the mission to build equity and diversity in the design industry. Um, so what they do is they provide high school students um, the exposure to our design profession and the possibilities of a career. Um, uh, like I mentioned before, it was started in 2021, launched in Chicago. This summer, they'll be taking it down to Miami, Florida. Um, and those of you who are in Columbus, it's a little bit akin to our Center of Design Camp Architecture. It kind of has that vibe and flavor to it. So um, growing and probably, hopefully, um, expanding across the country. The other thing going on at headquarters is that um, IADA has partnered with a company called Urban out of UK. Um, Urban is a, um, a recruiting agency, um, so they, um, they are architecture and interior design recruitment specialists. Um, they um, specialize in bringing diversity-driven recruitment solutions to firms. So um, they can help you with either executive searches or traditional recruitment searches. Um, also, graduate recruitment is um, an option or that they have. And if you, as an um, A&D firm, decide to solicit their help, um, the graduate recruitment is actually done on a pro bono basis. Um, what Urban asks is that if uh, they help you find a candidate and place um, a recent grad in your office, that that a and firm would then donate $2,500 back to the IIDA Foundation. Um, that foundation is what um, pays for things like Design Your World that we just talked about in Chicago and Miami. So um, this is kind of an exciting partnership. Again, I'm trying to champion um, spreading our interior design profession um, to those who might not know as much about it. So um, kudos to headquarters for growing in that mission. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Christina so she can talk about the year ahead and what's on the horizon. Hello all, as Kirsten said, I'm Christina Reagan and I am your president elect and I am coming live to you from Cleveland, Ohio. So if you don't know me, that's who I am. And I'm excited to share uh, just a snippet of what we have going on or what we'd like to be seeing for 2023. So much excitement, we can't even share it. There we go. Uh, wait, we skipped. It's okay, we skipped. Oop. Well, basically, sorry. yeah, go back. I, we're, we just right, sorry, skipped. sorry. It's probably on a little bit of delay, so. 
I have a bad habit of skipping all over. There we go. Okay. So we have developed goals, obviously one-year goals, three-year goals, five-year goals, um, so we can really plot our future. You'll notice we have a lot of goals listed here, but a lot of these goals really focus on membership and outreach um, in the upcoming years. We love our members, and obviously our membership base is everything to us. We would not have our organization without our members. Um, and outreach, you know, we really want to make sure that everybody's seeing what we're doing, what we want to be a part of, and that we're getting that across to headquarters and, and national attention. So we're excited for all these things that we're doing. And we have some immediate initiatives. So we are working on growing our student membership base. Um, students are very important to us. Obviously, the younger generation is vital. So the more we get them involved, the more we keep growing our chapter. Uh, cultivate relationships with senior level designers. We don't want to stop um, with our students. We want to go all the way through to all of our levels of um, experience. We are also setting an advocacy strategy and timeline. And as I spoke about a little bit, and you heard um, Kirsten talk about us being on the headquarters website, building awareness of our chapter's impact. So what are we doing? What are our members doing? Um, Get just really recognizing what it, what is going on here in Ohio and Kentucky. So obviously all of these things that we are a part of cannot happen without um, financials. <laughs> so this is just a snapshot of where we spend um, percentages of our money. So you can see that a large percentage goes into signature events and programs. So that's the Friday forums that Kirsten talked about, the design awards that you saw and really all of the programming. Um, that we put out there. Uh, we have been focusing on advocacy and DEE and DEI initiatives. So you can see 20% goes towards that. Um, and then you can just kind of see how we kind of break down how the money is all allocated here. We are super excited that we have merged all of our social media into these one accounts. So if you are in Louisville, Lexington, or you are in Cleveland, Akron, you can visit these social media sites and see what we are doing across all of our chapters. So that's very exciting to stay up with what's happening. Here's some of our students that we love so much. This is actually images of the students at the design shred that was held uh, prior to the design awards. So you can see students here from Ohio and Kentucky, and they all work together to create uh, these design solutions for our pro project. Uh, other student news is that we actually have um, students going to attend the Texas Oklahoma Shift Conference. As Kirsten said, that is the largest group of student um, campus centers. Um, they host, they have a big conference that students can go to, and we are excited to send two students um, we would like to say congratulations to those two students. We have Alexandra Quezon, who's a junior at Miami University, and we have Haley Medeiros, who's a sophomore at University of Kentucky. So they wrote essays, and then we selected them from the essay participants. So we're excited to send someone from Ohio and Kentucky to Texas to see what they can experience at that SHIFT conference. And we are currently in the process of planning our own um, student conference. So since we're just behind Texas, Oklahoma, we figured we better get ourselves uh, in gear and start planning our own conference. So look forward in 2024 for us to have that very own programming. Advocating for our profession is something that is very important. Um, so we are working on what that means always. We're reinventing how we advocate and what we do to show our advocacy efforts. Um, we recently started an account to start saving money to invest in our advocacy goals. So that's something we're very excited about. Um, and we will share more of that as we create our path forward um, through advocacy. We are right now really working on our grassroots campaign to um, you know, make sure that everybody is educated on what interior designers do, what our profession is, um, how we can help people. Um, so look for, we will be sending out a survey 
Uh, look for that survey so you can share what your thoughts and ideas are about advocacy so we can work that into um, our next best steps. And this slide is saying a very large thank you to our 2022 Ohio Kentucky chapter benefactors. Um, we love you. Without all of you, none of this programming that we're talking about would be a possibility. Um, we are very grateful for the support from all of these amazing partners. And if you'd like to get on that slide next year this time and be a part of all of this awesome programming, this is kind of like our shout out to get involved now. Our 2023 benefactor program is live. Um, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to our VP of benefactors. Hopefully the lovely and talented Sammy will be able to throw her contact information into the chat. I had to go off of the chat because you don't want me chatting and presenting at the same time um, as much as I'd love to, maybe in the future someday. Um, so definitely if you have any questions, get involved. You know, we love, we love to partner with all of you. So these are some of our chapter-wide events that we have coming up. For those of you that don't know, we have, we offer key practice study groups. Those have been very, very popular. There's one going on right now, and then we'll have another one in July. We have a new member coffee, which is again, like I said, across the chapter, that is happening in February. So if you joined at last year as a new member, you should be getting an invitation to that. Definitely get on there. It's a great way to learn more um, about who we are and what we do. We have Friday forums coming up and our topics are gonna to be outreach and advocacy focused. Uh, we have one in April and we have one in August. So look forward to that information and seeing who our speakers are gonna be for that. Uh, the Thrive Leadership Roundtable is happening in May this year, so pay, pay attention for invites going out for that. Um, we have student programming kind of across the whole chapter in the different city centers in September. And then, as Kirsten was pointing out, um, we don't have the chapter-wide design awards this year, but we will have the city centers celebrating design in their own home city centers happening, at, you know, kind of at the end of the year in October and November. So definitely something exciting to look forward to. And this is a list, you know, this is not all of the things that are happening in 2023, but this is just a list to get you thinking about some of the things you might want to be involved in in 2023 in your local city centers. Cincinnati Dayton has the very popular gutter ball tournament in April. Uh, Columbus is coming up to their Get Connected in February. That is a great way, again, to find out what's going on and get involved in whatever manner that is for you personally. Toledo has the boat cruise in August. Um, if you have never attended the boat cruise, I strongly suggest it. It is a great time, I can say from personal experience, hoping to visit Toledo in August myself. Um, Cleveland Akron has the golf outing in August, another good time um, that's partnered with AIA. So you can hang out with your um, interior design and architecture friends and our industry friends. And then Lulex also, they started a golf outing last year. So if you want to get involved in something that's still kind of new and up and coming, definitely go out and try their golf outing. And obviously you can visit our website at any time to get, you know, updates on what events are going on locally in your city center. Okay, thanks, Christina. Uh... So high level of what's been happening this past year and some things to look forward to as we um, roll into 2023. Um, I was trying to follow the chat and that's when I got my AV um, struggle boat <laughs> happening. So um, if our lovely Sammy or somebody has any um, questions that people have dropped in the chat, if you don't mind kind of shouting those out that we can address now, that would be helpful. It looks like it's a lot of IIDA love, which I love to see. Lots of links, lots of things to check out. Um,
surveys to take, help us do better, help us plan better. So a couple, like a two minute, three minute survey on this past year's design awards, we would love for your input there. Obviously, we're all here anytime, too, to answer any questions. So um, if you'd like to talk about IIDA, contact one of us. We also like to talk about IIDA. Okay, Carolyn asks, how long with the design award project photos be posted at the site listed? How long will they be posted? I think is maybe what we were getting at. Um, Sammy indefinitely. <laughs> mm -hmm. They'll be there forever. <laughs> they might move to a, so you'll notice on our website, we have a design awards tab. And then on that, you'll see that it says 2022. Uh, as we continue to grow this event, each year we'll have their own little subsection. So they'll live there forever and ever. Okay. And then thank you, Sammy. Um, uh, Terry was asking any dates set for those city center events that um, we were just mentioning. Um, yes and yes. I wish I had them off the top of my head. Directors, if you are on today, if you can drop some of those dates in, uh, I know with certainty that February Columbus Get Connected is set in stone. So give us a second and we can get back to you, Terry. February 16th, Get Connected in Columbus. Cleveland Akron, Get Connected February 21st. I love this. It's like director's time to promo their, their stuff. <laughs> All right, other thoughts or questions? So the quarterly newsletter comes out here shortly in February. So make sure to check that out. Um, a, lot of, a lot of those dates will be in that newsletter as well as some recap on what we talked about today. Um, surveys for design awards, a whole bunch of content. If you are, are not already receiving our newsletter and would like to do so, um, go ahead and drop your email in our chat too so we can make sure that you're included on that. Carolyn asks, will there be any traveling CEUs this year to each city center? Um, we have CEUs planned at the local city center levels, um, not necessarily a traveling one. Uh, we do do our Friday forums, which are virtual, um, and those um, qualify for continuing education. So um, look for that. We'll do one in the spring and one in the fall. Okay, well, we can hang on for just a couple more minutes here if anybody has um, some final thoughts or questions. But I do wanna thank all of you guys for attending. Um, it's exciting to have such a great turnout and so much momentum heading into 2023. So um, we appreciate all of you. Look forward to hopefully seeing you at an upcoming event in person. All right, and then Carolyn, I love you, also all the questions. Um, any update on licensing legislation? Um, uh, what we can say right now is kind of what Christina covered about just um, setting aside some money to start um, uh, that process all over again. If you're familiar with the kind of history of our Ohio licensure 
um, timeline. Um, there have been some stops and starts. We got pretty close um, and then had to take a pause. So um, we are basically revamping, regrouping, gathering funds to kind of kick that process off again. So everything we, is being do, done kind of grassroots right now at local levels and our um, wonderful VP of advocacy, Tamara, is putting some structure to that right now. Uh, when we gather as a chapter in April at our next quarterly meeting, we are actually making that an advocacy focused um, quarterly. Um, at that time, hopefully we have um, connected some dots and we'll have an action plan moving forward. So I'm glad you asked because it's definitely top of mind right now and something that we are regenerating and working towards in the coming year. Okay, hopefully I captured all the questions. If I missed one, feel free to drop it back in again. Lots of thank yous, lots of hugs to everyone, lots of appreciation. It's mutual, I assure you. Okay, well, if you have a friend who missed out today, we have recorded this, so we'll make sure to get that posted. All right, you guys. Hopefully we'll see you soon in February. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone.